The movie begins with an astronaut named Roy who works on the International Space Station. He climbs down an antenna to make repairs to a robotic arm that was reported to be malfunctioning. While Roy is still climbing down, he notices something strange in the distance. But before he can figure out what it is, a loud explosion occurs at the top of the station, causing several astronauts to fall off. He tries warning the control of an electrical surge, but another explosion causes him to lose his footing and he too falls off. Roy tries to stabilize himself during the fall to avoid blacking out before he can release his parachute. He manages to minimize his spinning and eventually regains control of his body once he enters the Earth's atmosphere. Roy opens his parachute in time and although a piece of debris punctures his parachute, he still lands successfully, surprising both himself and everyone around him. As soon as he lands, he blacks out but notices paramedics coming towards him. Several days after his fall, Roy discovers that electrical storms known as surges have been happening worldwide, and no one knows what is causing them. The electrical storm was also what caused the robotic arm to malfunction and was responsible for his fall. One day, he's invited by General Stroud to a top secret meeting. When he gets to the base, he's introduced to General Rivas and General Vogel. They talk about the occurrence of surges and inform him that they have captured radiation coming from Neptune, which is the cause of the power surge. Then General Rivas asks Roy if he knows anything about the Lima project. This question takes him by surprise, since it was a mission his father was on. He tells the general that the Lima project was the first manned expedition to the outer solar system, but the ship disappeared 16 years ago, after which all missions to the outer solar system were halted, and the Lima project's main goal was to find extraterrestrial life on other planets. General Stroud then shows him pictures of the crew on board the Lima project and reveals that they think his father is still alive. He explains that the surges are happening as a result of an antimatter reaction, something that was powering the Lima project. And since Roy's father was in charge of it, it could only mean that he is still alive. The generals tell Roy that they want to send him to Mars so he can send a direct message to his father. But the mission is top secret which is why he will only be told the major details when he needs to know them. He is told that they are currently coming up with a cover story to keep the public calm until Roy can talk to his father and make the surges stop. With no other choice left but to agree to the mission, Roy heads back to the base. He recalls his father leaving for the Lima project when he was 16 and disappearing when he was 29. He then turns on a message that he had received from his father in space. Just as the message is ending, a colonel named Pruitt shows up behind him and introduces himself as his father's friend. The colonel tells him that they had met when Roy was younger. He asks Roy what he thinks about their mission, to which he replies that he does not think that his father is still alive. The colonel agrees that it may be a possibility, however, they need to prepare themselves for the fact that his father could be hiding something from them. After their conversation, Roy heads to a quarantine center where he will be staying until his flight to the moon, and he needs to stay under quarantine to make sure he does not contract any illnesses before the mission. A few days later, at the end of his quarantine period, Roy begins to think of his ex-wife, Eve. He begins to record a message for her, but ends up deleting it. The next morning, Roy is fitted into his spacesuit and welcomed onto his flight by Captain Liu. Soon, the flight launches for the moon, and Roy notices news about the death toll rising due to the surges, reminding him of his actual mission. As they land on the moon, Roy notes that it has turned into another version of Earth and says that his father would have hated what has become of the moon now. He's pulled out of his thoughts when Colonel Pruitt tells him that their rocket is called Cepheus and the crew accompanying them will be military personnel who are unaware of the actual mission. The colonel then insists that they need to keep things that way. At first, Roy does not say anything, but he breaks his own silence and asks the colonel what his last conversation was with his father. The colonel replies that it was an unpleasant conversation, since Roy's father was unhappy with him for leaving the program at their company, Spacecom, representing the United States Space Command. Seeing Roy's expression, the colonel asks him if this mission will be hard for him. However, Roy assures him that Spacecom is trying to accuse his father, who is a hero, of something they are not sure of. The two of them are then escorted to their destination, where they are informed that military personnel will take them towards no man's land in order to reach their rocket. Sometime later, a commander named Levant takes them to their space rover, and they begin their journey to reach Cepheus. 
The commander warns them that there has been increased pirate activity in the no man's land and they need to stay alert. Not long after they begin driving, they are surrounded by several rovers full of pirates who manage to shoot half of the military personnel, escorting Roy and Colonel Pruitt, including Commander Levant. When the commander is killed in action, Roy takes over despite his spacesuit getting punctured and tries to deal with the situation. He uses his skills to lead one of the rovers away, causing it to crash. He then shoots at the pirates behind them, giving him the chance to drive away. After the pirates are left behind, someone from the command center tells Colonel Pruitt that his heartbeat is irregular and he needs to get it checked out. Hearing this, Roy wonders why the colonel continues to fly despite not being in the best health, just like his father. As they head towards Cepheus, Pruitt tells Roy that he cannot accompany him on the mission. But before Roy leaves, the colonel hands him a USB with classified information on it. He then informs Roy that people at Spacecom do not like him, but he needs to make sure that he completes his mission. Once Roy is seated inside the rocket and it successfully launches, he watches the video message on the USB. To his surprise, he finds out that Spacecom suspects that his father, Clifford, has intentionally cut off all external communications, and if Clifford has overpowered his own crew and his son's message does not deter him, the mission is to kill him. All of a sudden, the captain of the rocket announces that they are going to be attending a distress call. When Roy finds that the Cepheus is going to make a stop, he tries to stop the captain from attending to any distress calls due to the classified nature of his mission. However, the captain tells him that he is only a passenger and cannot discuss what he chooses to do. Knowing that he cannot disclose any details, Roy stays silent and lets the captain attend to the distress call of a craft that was sent to space for biomedical and animal research. The captain along with Roy go out into space and head to the spacecraft. And according to the data, the spacecraft should have 19 people on board. When the two of them enter the ship, it is empty and despite them calling out for the members on board, no one responds. The captain goes ahead while Roy looks around for clues about what could have happened. When he finds nothing behind, he follows the captain and calls out to him. Strangely, the captain does not respond and as he goes closer, he finds a primate eating his face off. As soon as the primate spots him, it jumps towards him, but Roy manages to use his gun and kill it. He then drags the captain's body to the door as more primates rush towards them. At the last moment, Roy closes the craft's door, locking the primates inside. He quickly gets back to Cepheus and informs the control center of the captain's passing. On the other hand, the co-pilot feels shaken up from the incident and is unable to land the rocket. Roy takes over the control and lands the rocket carefully before the crew is escorted into a facility on Mars. Mars is also the last official stop that his father had made during the Lima project. There, he is greeted by Helen Lantos, the operations manager on Mars. She takes Roy to a chamber where he is made to record several messages for his father after reading them from a script. After multiple failed attempts at getting a response from his father, Roy decides to use his own words to communicate in hopes of hearing back from Clifford. To everyone's surprise, his father ends up responding, but Roy is not given any more details and is told that he is being sent back to Earth. Since he is upset by the news, his heart rate begins to climb up and he is sent for a psychological evaluation. For the first time ever, Roy fails his psychological evaluation and is forced to calm himself down so that he can go back to Earth. Just then, Helen walks into his room and asks him for the details about his mission. When she notices his hesitation, she tells him that Spacecom has been lying to him from the beginning. She reveals that she has discovered nuclear weapons inside Cepheus, which means that the mission he is on is to get rid of something. Helen explains that she was a victim of the Lima project as well, since her parents were part of the crew too. When Roy does not respond, she shows him a video, which is the last recorded message sent by his father. As the video starts playing, his father comes on the screen and reports that some of his crew was refusing to move forward and their psychological health was getting worse. However, he got rid of everyone who wanted to turn around because he did not want to stop their mission and wanted to continue his exploration of the outer solar system. Helen tells Roy that his father had betrayed everyone, but Spacecom painted him as a hero to protect their reputation. As soon as Roy hears this, he knows that he needs to somehow get on to Cepheus and uncover the truth. He asks Helen if she can sneak him in, but she responds that she can only get him closer to the rocket, not inside it. The two then head to the launch pad, where Helen tells Roy that the only way he can get inside the rocket is through the lake underneath it. 
With only a few minutes left before launch, Roy manages to unlock the hatch and gets inside. This immediately alerts the crew of a breach, and they contact Spacecom before Roy can stop them. He tries to tell them that he does not mean any harm and is not going to cause any problems for the crew. However, his assurances do not change anything, and the crew is ordered to get rid of Roy using any means necessary. Roy initiates emergency takeoff as two of the crew members head towards him. Suddenly, the rocket launches, causing one of the astronauts to hit her head on the wall and die from the impact. At the same time, the ship's captain shows up behind them and tries to shoot at Roy who is struggling with the other astronaut. The bullet misses him and hits a gas canister, contaminating the air. With this, the last two crew members die. Sometime later, Roy sends out his last transmission to Spacecom and tells them that he's going to Neptune to put an end to the Lima project. He then turns off the comms and begins a long 79-day journey to Neptune. The journey is long, and being in no gravity zone for that long starts to affect Roy's mental and physical health. Just when he thinks that he cannot take it anymore, he notices Neptune's rings. But Cepheus cannot go beyond the rings, so he decides to abandon it and takes a smaller craft towards the planet. As soon as he goes beyond the rings, he finds his father's spaceship in the middle. Due to the ice, Roy's craft gets damaged and he is unable to land it properly. After some effort, he manages to land and gets out of the craft. He heads towards the Lima Project ship and enters it. Inside, he finds the bodies of the dead crew floating around. As he gets deeper into the ship, he calls out for his father, but does not receive a response from him. He then starts going through some of the files and data to see what the Lima Project had found since the years it went missing. At that moment, his father comes up behind him and calls out for him. He tells Roy that he can no longer see well, but is glad to see that his son has followed in his footsteps. He goes on to say that he has been committed to searching for extraterrestrial life. For him, nothing else had mattered, despite knowing that he would be leaving his son and wife behind. To Roy's shock, his father reveals that he did not care about either of them, so when his crew wanted to turn back, he had gotten rid of them. The ones who remained had gathered data, but found that there was no life on any of the planets around them. So when the crew wanted to turn around, they got into a fight which caused a catastrophe. This is what has been causing the surges, and Clifford has been trying ever since to contain them. Roy tells his father that it is now time for them to leave and head back home, but his father sees the Lima Project as his only home. But he manages to convince his father to leave and helps him into his spacesuit. As the two of them head out into the space, Roy hooks himself to his father to make sure that they stay together until they are inside Cepheus. All of a sudden, his father releases pressure from his suit, dragging both of them towards Neptune's rings. Roy's father tells him to let go, since he wants to spend his last days in a place he considers home. With no other choice left, Roy lets his father go and watches him float in the distance. To make it back to Cepheus, Roy needs to cross Neptune's rings, and since his craft was damaged, the only way to cross them is by floating through them. He then uses the door of his craft as his shield and crosses the ring. While crossing it, he gets a flashback where he is seen gathering data from the Lima Project. He reveals that his father had explored several other planets and captured great detail like never seen before. Before leaving the ship, he activates the nuclear bomb. Once Roy reaches his rocket, he sends another transmission to Spacecom, informing them about his findings. He also tells them that he's going to use the pressure from the explosion to propel the rocket forward. As soon as the bomb goes off, Roy puts an end to the searches, and in 12 years he makes it back to Earth where he is rescued by the military. As a result of his findings, Roy is painted as a hero and he is able to continue working as a Spacecom astronaut. However, Roy realizes that he has more important things in life to focus on. After a while, he goes through his last psychological evaluation at Spacecom and gets back together with his wife. 